day and welcome to KP Global Capital Limited Q1 FY24 earnings conference call hosted by Go India Advisors. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal the operator by pressing star and zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now want the conference over to Mr. Ravi Khan Bhatt from Capri Global Capital Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Uh, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Ravi Khan. I shall read out a brief disclaimer for today's call. The discussion on today's call regarding CGCL's earnings performance will be based on judgments derived from the declared results and information regarding business opportunity available to the company at this time. The company's performance is subject to risks, uncertainties, and assumptions that could cause actual results to differ materially in future. Given these uncertainties and other factors, participants on today's call may observe due caution while interpreting the results. The full disclaimer is available on slide 42 of Q1 FY24 Investor Deck. Participants are requested to note the same. And I request our MD, Mr. Rajesh Sharma, to present the opening remarks. Good afternoon, friends. It is a pleasure to welcome you all to the Capri Global's first earnings call of the financial year. We declared our reviewed consolidated results for Q1 FI24 on Saturday, 5th August 2023. I hope you had a chance to go through the investor's deck. FI24 shall be unique in some aspects. It will be the first full year of operation for the Gold Loan Vertical. We aim to turn Gold Loan Vertical profitable by end of this financial year. The equity we raised in March 2023 is fully deployed. It will add our core earnings and overall profitability. Keeping this in view, we will analyze our Q1 FI24 performance. Our dispersal increased 128% year on year to reach 26.9 billion. Our dispersal momentum is usually soft in Q1 year every year, due to which the dispersals have shown a 5% QOQ decline. However, because of the strong momentum maintained in the gold loan business, the decline has been muted compared to our performance in Q1 FI23. Excluding gold loans, our dispersal increased 65% year on year, but lower than 31% QOQ. This sequential decline is in line with the Q1 FI23 performance and seasonality of uh, quarter one in lending business. Share of gold loans was 51% of Q1 FI24 dispersal, while MSME and housing was 12% and 11% respectively. The balance was contributed by construction finance in direct lending. The AUM momentum was marginally stronger than Q4 FI23, increasing 61% year on year to rupees 112.3 billion. AUM excluding gold loan was increased 38% year on year and 5% quarter on quarter. Share of gold loan continued to increase, rising to 14% of AUM compared to 11% in Q4 FI23. We expect our gold loans AUM to touch base across 30 billion rupees by end of this financial year. This could be 20% of AUM, assuming we sustain a 50% momentum of overall AUM growth. As you may have noticed in the AUM exhibit in slide 4, the momentum in MSME as well as housing portfolio was sustained a healthy momentum despite a sequentially weaker dispersal quarter. In housing, we concluded a maiden direct assignment transaction with the leading housing finance company amounting to Rs. 569 million at a competitive yield. Our own book housing AUM is lower to that extent. The share of construction finance AUM was 17.5%. While growth in construction finance has been strong, please note that we are also guided by the share of this vertical in consolidated AUM of 20%. We are comfortable growing construction finance as long as our underwriting parameters are satisfied and the share of this book is still 8 or below 20% of AUM. We have reported a 38% year on year increase in our net profit to rupees. 636 million. The profit is lower by marginal 2% quarter on quarter. To fully understand the earnings, let me first start the core earnings. Our net interest income increased 
77% year on year and 26% quarter on quarter to page 2370 million is explained on slide 16 this improvement was aided by both the strong equity funding of q1 fi24 balance sheet as well as our improved spreads our weighted average yield on advance increased 55 basis quarter on quarter to 15.7% while the weighted average cost of borrowing was up 20 basis quarter on quarter to 8.7% you may recall our cost of borrowing had been steadily increasing through fi23 while the yield on advances were improving with a lag this difference is visible in the segmental yield graph on slide 15 As a result of these improvements, our spread stood at 7 percent, an improvement of 66 basis year on year and 35 basis on quarter on quarter. Our net interest margins were unsurprisingly at a robust 9.6 percent, a level we last reported in Q4 FI22. This was added as mentioned earlier by strong equity funding of Q1 FI24 balance sheet. As leverage improved, NIM shall mathematically decline. while we will enjoy the benefit of higher earnings in the fi24 we would like to assess the earning efficiency of our lending business by the spread we generate the share of our non interest income in the net income was 25.4% lower than 33% in qi fi23 and 30% in fi23 the dip was caused by lower car loan fee income owing to certain one off adjustments secondly the fee income tied to balance sheet specifically msme in housing finance was also lower owing to softer dispersal during q1 fi24 we expect this softness to reverse from q2 fi24 the car loan fee shall also pick up momentum from q3 fi24 the cost income ratio declined marginally to 66% in q1 fi24 from 68.2% in q4 fi23 the cost income ratio excluding gold loan business was at 50% this is marginally higher 48% we reported for fi23 however this too should reverse as earnings is kept during the year in gold loan business although our active branch network was at 680 we had onboarded staff in another 60 location as of june 2023 the branch work at various stages of progress Hence, the operating expenses of Q1 FY23 also include partial OPEX of additional 60 gold loan branches. We are stated we shall pause branch expansion in gold loan business after touching a network of 73 branches by Q3 FY24. We have almost reached that level as we speak, and the incremental cost in intensity shall steadily decline beginning September October 2023. Our GNP ratio is stood at 1.8 percent, 50 basis higher than Q4 FY23, but is substantially lower than the 2.7 percent ratio we reported in Q1 FY23. The PCR of the stage three assets was 27.8 percent. Our credit cost stood at rupees 239 million, which was higher than 120 million in Q4 FY23, but marginally lower than. Rupees 246 million we reported in Q1 FY23. As highlighted on slide 13, the average credit cost is trading five quarters is rupees 176 million. During the quarter, we made some accelerated provisioning on three construction finance exposure to a single entity amounting to rupees 160 million. This was restructured and classified as NP, attracting a provision of rupees 50 million or 31 percent of exposure. We have. Initiated recovery proceeding in two exposures and in due course expected recovery of the 30 million. For the remaining rupees around 130 million exposure, we are exploring various options for that recovery. Despite the higher credit cost, including the one-off change, our credit cost to average asset under management ratio was 89 basis in Q1 FY24, in line with our pre-COVID long-term trend. Apart from the rupees 30 million recovery mentioned earlier. We expect additional recoveries to happen in construction finance vertical in Q2 or Q3 FY24. There has also been a marginal increase in MSME NPAs and a slightly sharper increase in the housing finance NPAs. Our recovery efforts are continuous, and we expect to improve asset quality going ahead. I would also like to additionally highlight that we do not see any structural issues here. We are aware of the rising. Pessimism on asset quality of NBFCs in general, retail loans in particular, 
given the lending boom of past two years. Nevertheless, let me reiterate that we are not present in unsecured lending. Our lending is secured with very comfortable loan to value across all segments, whether retail or wholesale. This gives us comfort on managing our asset quality. We have reported 2.2% ROA and 7.1% ROA in Q1 FI24. Excluding the loss in gold loan business, our ROA and ROE would have been 3% and 9.6% respectively. As we move towards the break-even in gold loan business, our profitability should substantially increase, especially in S2 FI24. There shall also be additional drivers like the absence of one-off adjustment there that shall contribute to the profit momentum. To conclude, I would say we have begun FY24 on a sound note. We shall deliver yet another year of sound business growth, but it will also be coupled with a very strong profit growth. With that, I conclude my remarks. We shall now take questions. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone wishing to ask a question may please press star in one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Dave from High Dong Securities. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, my question is related to the overall composition of EUM. Um, the MSME segment has come down um, uh, from around 40% to around 35%. And earlier, I think you guided that it would remain uh, north of 40% and in the range of 40 to 50%. So given the strong traction and the focus uh, in the gold loan segment, um, how would the overall product mix look like? going forward is there any um, kind of uh, targeted mix that is there in mind that was my first question and second um, I see that there's a, a increasing focus on co-lending uh, in case of MSME as well as housing finance um, any any could you give us any uh, color on that as well Yeah, thank you. So I think before gold loan, our key growth driver used to be MSME. When we uh, uh, launched the gold loan and that also across about 750 branches. So while retail proportion in overall AU have grown significantly, but if we talk about MSME, MSME, uh, the disbursement plan and expansion remain the same. But since the gold loan has added to the overall AUM, that is the reason that MSME have gone a little bit down. If we look at down the line two year scenario, the gold loan uh, composition will be about uh, overall AUM 20 to 25 percent, and MSME will be about uh, 25 to 30 percent. And if you talk about housing finance, which is done through a, a standalone subsidiary company. Housing finance is growing at a faster pace, about 50% plus. And with the back of branch expansion, that standalone business will continue to grow uh, at that pace for 40 to 50% in the next two years. Okay, okay. Understood, understood. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one. The next question is from the line of Nikhil Niyati from Equator Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to ask a question. Uh, my question is uh, regarding the MSME yield. Uh, so I wanted to know uh, what percent of our book is repriced, knowing that our yield has gone up this quarter, and how we can uh, see the yield panning up in the future. Thank you, sir. Yeah. 
So uh, we have increased our uh, long-term reference rate by 50 basis on in the first week of April. So our uh, yield has been passed on to almost 60% of customer in MSME, 40% still remain on the semi fix. So uh, those customers, the hike will not happen, but 60% customer of the past have already been increased by LTR 50 basis. As far as the incremental lending is concerned, that is happening, maintaining our the targeted spread in MSME. We are lending about close to 15.5% yield in the incremental lending we are able to maintain. Okay, sir. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you for asking the question. Thank you for. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Raghav Garg from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity, uh, sir. Just a few questions. Uh, firstly, on the gold loan business, um, uh, we've seen uh, last uh, couple of years there's been a lot of competition. Uh, just a very high level question uh, what is your sense in terms of competitive intensity in this business? Um, yeah, that'll be my first question. So, gold on we have seen in last two years a lot of competition, especially coming in the lower rate segment by the public sector bank. So, they are the new entrant where they are offering at a much lower rate, but their ticket size remains high. So, basically, they are more focusing on the higher ticket size. And uh, typically, while theoretically they welcome all the customer, but they don't like to entertain the customer which comes for a 30,000 rupees or 50,000 rupees of loan. So, I, we, there is a clear cut demarcation between the customer segments. Among the uh, gold loan brand company and NBFC also, the gold loan is not that like a product of uh, unsecured lending or which can be done without proper investment in the branch expansion. So, there is some sort of entry barrier. So, we have seen that in, in among the NBFC, while we see in other products more than 30, 40, 50 players and a lot of regional players, in gold loan, the major competition comes to the NBFC with the pawn brokers who lend at a very unreasonable high rate. And I think that is where the opportunity also lies. So this business uh, will continue to grow, looking at the overall AUM group, the growth which is coming also because of the gold loan prices increasing. And a lot of people are open to uh, borrow against the gold with the formal uh, players. So, if we talk about as, a, as far as the Capri is concerned with the 750 branches and then branch will continue to grow, to build the AUM of uh, 10, 12,000 crore rupees in next uh, 5, 7 years, is in overall economy, in overall the AUM of uh, 3 lakh crore plus of the gold loan, it still remains uh, very uh, small and very much uh, possible and uh, profitable. Uh, uh, sir, that's uh, uh, very well understood and thanks for your answer. Uh, what I meant to ask is, uh, in this uh, quarter, uh, uh, how do you assess uh, the overall industry comparative uh, intensity to be, uh, whether it's still as high as, uh, you know, what you highlighted uh, a couple of quarters ago or last year, uh, whether it's uh, still uh, as high uh, as that? You're talking about competition, you're asking yeah. about our growth. Sir, uh, I mean, uh, uh, both, uh, uh, you know, in terms of your growth and, uh, you know, what is your assessment uh, of, of competition uh, and hence the impact on your growth uh, or not? No, no. So, if we are expanding the our branch in ASPAC after the detailed analysis of the potential credit bureau, AUM, competition, we very well uh, are on our target. Our branches are able to achieve the average growth of about 22 lakh uh, month after month, and which is remain in our target. And our branches will achieve uh, the desired profitability in the targeted time. And uh, we, we are not going to stop even at 750 branches. So we, we clearly see the potential. Number two, some point of time, city-wise, we are going to convert our gold loan branches where they will also be sourcing business and, and leads uh, for MSME home loan also. So overall, if you talk about the growth side, we are uh, quite uh, bullish and confident about achieving our growth target. 
in the in the gold loan segment and uh, this vertical is going to be profitable once uh, by the year end of the all the all the branches will uh, turn profitable except which are open recently so sir uh, what would be the break even level for you in terms of uh, a gold loan per gold loan uh, branch uh, a dedicated gold loan branch uh, what would be that like level where you would uh be taking even i think i think right now it's around 2 and a half crores per branch right so once it achieve a base of 3.25 crores branch achieve the break even anything above start contributing directly to the profitability understood sir uh and sir uh, uh, uh i mean although i think i could get but i just wanted to ask uh, uh, what is the per Uh, a branch expense that would be would be incurring for a gold loan, typically gold loan branch uh, for us, including the employee yes, expense. It is a city, and uh, so we have branches which have four people, men by four staff, men by five, men by six. So it is not a straight answer. So if our competition has a U of thirty crore high potential segment, is a low potential segment, depending on the the size of the branch. the opex on the branch and the manpower of the branch is put it ranges right from 1 lakh rupees per month operating cost to up to 2 lakh 2 lakh 25000 rupees operating cost depending on the location and its potential so this is the operating cost is apart from the employee cost correct uh, these would be the other thing this is all the operating cost okay. entire operating cost is put in salary and all and uh, sir just one last yeah So the final question, uh, I uh, uh, I uh, uh, understand that you have a, a branch in Vasai and Mirar. Uh, uh, so just today there's been an article uh, in Hindustan Times that uh, uh, you know uh, the uh, police has bust a major uh, a fake document racket uh, in the construction sector. Uh, the uh, number of flats involved here are about. Uh, or other number of families involved are about 3500 over basically sold these flats now they would have taken loans from uh, you know uh, some of the financiers uh, which are in that area uh, would we have any kind of exposure to uh, or to to this uh, uh, project uh, in vasai and virar uh, if you are aware of that and that is uh, i don't i don't think that we are doing any under construction project financing and housing uh, finance vertical at all so we don't finance any project at all unless it is ready that is the policy we follow in affordable housing segment and so even at the retail level right you have to you don't fund any under construction okay. thank you sir that's very helpful and uh, that's all from my side Thank you. The next question is on the line of Bunty Chawla from IDBI. Please go ahead. Yes, thank you for giving me the opportunity. Uh, and similarly, continuing the uh, gold loan branches. Uh, so, as we have seen earlier, we were giving competing at lower interest rate, like around 15 percent yield. Now we have moved to the competition layer at around 19 and half 20 percent, which is visible on the yield per se. so how do you see now the growth for you being the equivalent rate with your competition and secondly on the branch expansion you said so uh, we believe that up to 1000 branches you don't require any approval from the rbi right uh, after 1000 branches how the approval have we applied for any approval and all and how we should see the branch expansion along with the aum growth for the gold loan hello so uh, your first uh, part of the question was related to the yield so when we initially opened the branches uh, when we first entered august 2022 that time we had launched some low rate of interest uh, gold loan loans to create a buzz to create awareness which we have already achieved from the january quarter onwards we have started uh, going for the high yield and the low loan to uh, low value loans like where average ticket size was less than 1 lakh rupees where the yield was better so gradually now we are now our average onboarding of the customer is coming at about uh, uh, 16 and 17% and plus 
where default rate of interest is also being earned. So its active yield is now upward of 19%. And we continue to demand, uh, follow that um, philosophy in line with the market. If you talk about the RBI regulation of 1,000 branches, that is per company. So our uh, still we are we have a scope of about uh, 200 branches more because this 849 branches is also include the housing finance branches using housing the capital subsidy company. And after 1,000 branches, we'll apply to RBI and we don't see any issue in getting the approval per se. Okay, okay, sir. So secondly, on the construction finance, now as we are seeing that there is a good boom or real estate has been quite uh, quite strong currently. But uh, as we have historically seen, we have felt uh, across the industry some NP issues in the construction finance side. Now we are very much aggressively growing construction finance. So my sense is, uh, query is what steps or what different we are doing so that if there is any real estate cycle goes down, there should not be any negative surprises from this construction finance segment. So first of all, I want to say that we are not aggressively growing. We are growing what we have. We have strategically planned. So we have always, always said that we will do a overall EU basis 20% construction finance and 80% is going to be retail loans, secured retail loans. And that is the same uh, philosophy and principle we are following. Within a quarter, sometimes it happens that your construction finance crosses 22%, 23%, or some, some quarter it comes to 19%. But you see, year after year, it has always remained within the 20% range. Second thing, we follow a very unique strategy of uh, funding to developers which are smaller. So we are not going the ticket size of 200 or 400 crore type. Our average ticket size still remains less than 20 crore rupees even today. So you can imagine the kind of a small developer we are funding and then we take a clear mortgage of the property. The smaller projects are completed faster than the... We don't fund the 40-story project which takes six years, five years to complete. So this turnaround time is faster. There is no uh, income, uh, interest, uh, cost accumulated when the project get delayed. So with these uh, uh, core uh, lending principle uh, keeping in mind on the construction finance, we see where all project gets completed within three years time and, and very strongly uh, we feel that our one third of the projects are get balance transfer within 12 months. We just speak about underwriting in standard also where our repayment happens uh, even before time because of the BT. And in our other projects also we have seen that 50% of the balance project get prepayment than the repayment. So they get because of the faster sales. The strong cycle of the construction finance is helping the inventory to move faster. Even the cycle, uh, your turn slightly sluggish. Our safeguard mechanism of having a control on the cash flow and the security cover will always uh, protect our principal and interest. And historically, we have seen that uh, since the last four or five years, we have not seen the major any write-off or any unpredictable risk. While it happens, but that remains within the tolerant range of 1%. Thank you, sir. Thank you. That was very helpful. So lastly, on the stage three assets, uh, we observed the provision coverage ratio has come down from 30% to 27.28% kind of a thing. So what is the outlook on st uh, stage three assets provision coverage ratio? Because what we have observed in large NBFCs generally try to maintain 45, 40, 45 around percentage of PCR so that if there is any hiccups going forward, that should be safeguarded against this high PCR part. Hello. Hello. Yes. Am I audible? Yeah. So uh, we are keeping the RBI. RBI regulates that it should be based on the PGD and LGD, and it should not be minimum 25%. So we are following that. And if you look at our overall uh, the gross NPA, you can clearly see that there is a downward trend. From the last year of 2.7%, it has the gross NPA has come to 1.9%. 1, 1 
and that NP has come from two uh, percent to one point four percent. So, so on a uh, normal basis, long term basis, can we say twenty eight thirty percent is the PCR we are comfortable with? Yes, keeping oh. in our set quality, which is all secured. And there is a hard collateral is there, either the self-occupied house or business or gold. So that also gives us comfort when you are keeping this kind of PCR. In our past 10 years, we have not seen that our NPA, even the worst cycle of COVID, ILFS, DHFL, when there was a different kind of a crisis, our NPA has gone any given point in time more than 4%. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Best of luck for the future. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one. The next question is from the line of Mayur Liman from Profit Mark Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, thank you for the opportunity and congratulations for a good set of numbers. Uh, so my first question is uh, how you are seeing the incremental demand in an SME segment. Uh, any specific segment or geographies we are seeing a strong demand. Are we confident that we would be able to deliver 30% kind of growth in this segment? You are asking any particular segment? Uh, yes, uh, MSME segment or any segment where uh, we can see the strong demand. MSME and second one? Uh, sir, I, uh, can I repeat my question? Yeah. Okay. Uh, how you are seeing the incremental demand in MSME segment? Uh, any specific segment uh, or geographies, we are seeing a strong demand. So I'll, I'll answer this question. Wherever we see the strong demand, we put more branches. So likewise, we have more branches of MSME in Rajasthan and then followed by Madhya Pradesh and then Gujarat and then Maharashtra and then NCR. So this is that so we, we clearly see we expand in those geographies where we see the demand and also good collection efficiency. And it, so we clearly see the demand is very good in Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and Gujarat. And that is how our branches are. Uh, okay, sir. And uh, are we confident uh, which uh, segment is a strong uh, now we are seeing in terms of the demand, sir? No, so overall basis, our uh, MSME demand is very good. It is a, it is a segment which is largely uh, underpenetrated. If we talk about uh, the India have more than uh, 70 million of MSME, which are only 20% their credit demand is met by the formal lenders. So there exists a strong uh, demand uh, and I think there are many companies are focusing. We are few of them. We are one of them who are, who are focused on MSME. And MSME will continue to grow 30% plus for next three, four years. Uh, okay, sir. And uh, my second question is construction finance and housing finance vertical asset quality has uh, deteriorated much this quarter. Specifically, construction finance, uh, what would be the reason for the same uh, and your future outlook on the asset quality across these verticals? So, there is no there is no asset quality has deteriorated. If you see overall basis, GNP is lower than the even preceding quarter and the net NP is also lower. As far as the one of the account is concerned, where we have uh, restructured and on account of restructuring, we have provided the provision. But that account, uh, we are quite confident. And this is one of the account of the overall portfolio. It is not that there are many accounts have slipped away. And in, in this lending business, we will always see when we are operating 180, 190 construction expense account. One, two, three account can always will face some challenges which we have to uh, either recover and or um, use other measures to get out of it. So this is one of that account where we have provided and we are confident we'll find some other developer to take over that that uh, project at a price and we should be out, out from it. 
Okay, sir. And my uh, last question, uh, any new bank type uh, we have done for the expanding our co-lending book? The co-lending book, uh, we have already tied up with Union Bank, Punjab Sin Bank, Bank of India and uh, uh, Yuko Bank. So, gold loan side also, those sides are happening. And the uh, co-lending, in real sense, will pick up for the entire NBFC segment once this tech tie-up uh, technology uh, integration happens with the public sector banking system. But in any case, 40 to 50 crore rupees a month we are achieving and when the gold loan takes off, uh, which should happen sometime soon, then this uh, co-lending arrangement, the gold loan will further go up. Okay, sir. Uh, thank you so much, sir. That's all from my side. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one. As there are no further questions, I now hand the conference over to the management for the closing comments. Yes, thank you all. So, we will continue to uh, grow in the segments we operate in, which is MSME, housing finance, and gold loan. And uh, our, uh, our core philosophy will remain that we should serve the customer who are not affected by the banking system. So, when we are, we are complement to the banking rather than competing with them. We clearly see that our gold loan business will uh, will become uh, break even and we start delivering profit. So, with the approach of growing in MSME, uh, where the margins are good, gold loan is, is going to become profitable. And now, adequate capital is being made available. We clearly see this uh, year is going to be of the all time high profitability, and our margins are also improving. And uh, our uh, core banking uh, solution is getting implemented by the year end. So we clearly see a, a edge in our operating uh, cost should start showing in our result from the next year onwards. We already have about 100 uh, plus people technology team in our Gurgaon office. And those results will be seen in, in, in next year. So we are quite optimistic and uh, quite uh, confident or delivering superior return. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Go India Advisors, that concludes this conference call. We thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.